Hello. The scrawler box is a little beat up. Hopefully nothing in here is uh, too destroyed. I don't hear anything moving around. So let's open it up, find out what's inside, and make something with it. Oh, got it. This definitely looks like paint. Here's this month's print. And then there is the artist. If you want to check them out. I love the vibrant colors and the big blotch strokes. So here we have, looks like it might be three sheets of something. Let's just dig in here, figure out what we're working with. We have the scrawler box sticker. Very cool, fits the theme of this guy very well. We have the menu. Oh, we have, what's this? Bonus papers. This is the palette card. You can kind of use it as a palette knife. Why do I want to like put it in my wallet? So here's listing the art supplies. Oh, they swapped something out. Originally it was supposed to be a Stedler Mars Ergo Soft pencil. Now instead it's the Faber-Castell 2B pencil. Yeah say I am sad about that because I love a 2B pencil. Here it is. She's green. Castell 9000. I've always wanted a Castell 9000. <gasps> no, I'm kidding. I've never heard of it. The Faber Castell 9000 is a classic pencil launched by Count Alexander von Faber Castell in 1905. It's a whole lot of words for a pencil. We'll see if I notice anything unique about it. So then this is a three pack of art boards. There are three. They do not flop. That's how you know they're not paper and they are in our board. Next up, we have a paintbrush. Here she is up close. The Pro Art Series 60 Pro Lawn number eight round brush, I'm guessing. I'm holding it above my head so that you can see it. So I can't. Some paintbrushes you're supposed to like wet before you use them because they do come with a coating. It's a nice big paintbrush. I love doing big broad strokes because I'm scared of details. All right, we got three tubes of paint. We have Process Magenta, Lemon Yellow, and Process Blue. And these are the Daler Rowney System 3 Heavy Body Acrylics. And finally, we have a little candy, and it looks like it's bubblegum. Like the colors and everything remind me of a double bubble. Is it pink like a double bubble? It's not the same shape, but double bubble is like more tubular with like floral shape. I don't know. Whereas this is flat. Why does it look pre-chewed? I will not be chewing that through the video. You're welcome. Poor box. You've seen better days. So here's what we're working with. I definitely think we're gonna need some kind of palette to mix our paints so we can get some variety. I'm a little nervous. Love the aesthetic of it. Oh, here's more about the artist. Am I the only one who thinks that looks kind of tasty? <laughs> Things to try and tips. I think we're gonna need these. Try not to add too much water because you can turn it into a solvent which will make it crack and peel later on. Basically, it's about the textures and the like density and depth. You can see in the example, this is all a flat color back here, but then there's splotches to break up that flat color and add texture while still using the exact same color. I think that's something I'd really like to play around with because I don't think I usually go for super textured. I try to like blend it out and stuff like that. I love that color scheme. Anyway, I think the best thing to do would be to just start going at it. I'm gonna grab something to use as a palette. I have this little piece of glass glass from an old frame. I think it used to have my second grade class photo in it. I thought it could be handy for this. I also think I will grab those palette knives. Since I didn't use them really last time, I'm gonna feel guilty about it. So I guess first step is just to see what our paints are looking like. So you're just gonna have to enjoy the reflection of my umbrella light. Lemon yellow. Whoa. Looks like egg yolk. Let's try our process magenta. And then finally, process blue. Beautiful. I'm loving it. And I really want to use this big boy. We could do what it said to try and make a uh, skin tone by mixing all three colors together, equal parts, and then slowly adjusting it from there. So let's try that. I'm gonna flip this over because we could probably use those later. I'm gonna try to do equal parts. We got blue. We got yellow. And we've got the magenta. Hopefully that's close to equal parts. Mix it up. Kind of clay-like. All right, I don't think that really looks like a skin tone. It just looks like green. So maybe that means I need more red. Maybe a little more yellow. I mean, I guess this could be like a shadow color for a skin tone. I think it needs more yellow. No, it just kind of looks more green. Maybe it's just supposed to be like very subtle amounts of blue. Because when I mix skin tones, usually I like a little tiny bit of blue. I don't know why. I watched a tutorial a million years ago about why. <laughs> okay, this is looking more skin tony. Here we go. Wow, we've come a long way. I feel like it said equal parts. Almost all skin tones include a varying ratio of cyan, magenta, and yellow to create a perfect skin tone. First try mixing equal parts. Tried that. That was gross. It's a lot easier to lighten a tone than to dark. It. If you need to make the tone lighter, you can add yellow. If you need a rosier skin tone, you add a little red. If you need to make your skin tone darker, use a small amount of each primary color in equal quantity. 
Sounds like blue isn't really supposed to be one of the main colors here. Let's try and add some more yellow and red. What over here? We don't want one solid tone. So I'm gonna try and leave some of that as we slowly like lighten it to get some variety. I feel like I just learned something and that's exciting. Let's go down a little bit more red and that same amount of yellow. Hopefully you don't run out of paint just playing with mixing colors. So let's grab a little bit of this and mix that together. So yeah, blue seems like it should just be a subtle amount that you're adding. Otherwise you're just gonna get the color green or black. Okay, so this looks much more similar to what the artist made. I wonder how you get this without white. I feel like this is a nice good mixture to start with. And we have three artboards, so it'd be fun to maybe try to draw the same thing three times and see if I get any better. That's always a fun game to play because sometimes it gets worse. Let's move over to one artboard. We'll sketch something out. I'll try to draw something inspired by it a little bit and maybe we can try and add the blotches. I'm really nervous about the blotches, but you never know. We got a head. The hair looks like it might be a bun in the back. I don't think it's short hair because I see like things that kind of give the illusion of wisps. Which makes me think it's like a bun in the back of the head, which means I probably should have shifted that over. She has a more long line nose. She has a bit larger lips than that lately. Thinner eyebrows. Maybe if I just stretch out the eyebrows a little, they'll look thinner. There's something for shoulders, a little neck. Try to get the hairline right. That's a nice thing to look at when you're trying to create likenesses is the hairline. Cause sometimes you can kind of just revert to drawing hairlines the way you always do. And that's not necessarily correct if you want it to look like a certain person. So like look at where it dips in and where it's further back and the distance between the eyebrows and the hairline. So she has a bit of a rounded hairline that kind of comes close to the eyes. It comes down at a point before the ear and then middle part. Some wisps. Crease above her eye a bit more than what I drew. And of course I drew the eyes bigger, but it's what I do. Okay, it looks like she has a longer chin. I think it needs to come down to like there. Try and throw that in here. Update on the pencil. It does draw really well. It does seem really soft. It's apparently mixed graphite with clay. I'll have to try it on paper to really know, but it draws really well on this textured artboard. I think her nose was longer, but erasing clearly isn't this pencil's specialty. So I think we'll just save that maybe for a next rendition. I feel like usually it'd be a lot louder drawing on this texture, but it sort of just glides. Try something, throw on some paint. She kind of looks like Katara. If we just add little hair loopies. What? I should go over this with a kneaded eraser. Lift any of the graphite that might be swayed by the paint. Look how much I got. Now let's throw on a little paint. I think I'll start with the paint brush. So we'll try to get like colors where we want them and like blended if we're blending. And then we'll go on with the more blobbies. Okay, I'm gonna start with the mid-tone. Just kind of cover over the whole face. Probably need a couple layers. It is leaving a lot of uh, white underneath. I think water might be of assistance here. It really emphasized not using too much water. I'm just gonna like wet the brush lightly, dry it with a towel, just add the slightest bit of moisture. See if we get better luck that way. Kind of similar. Kind of blend into the darker color on the outside maybe. <laughs> Hopefully they blend. Severe shadows. Maybe my three tones are just too different. Maybe I'm just not used to painting darker skin tones. So we'll just keep going. A little bit more of a reddish tone for the nose and maybe the cheeks. Mix it in there. Hmm. Interesting. I can see like it's so blobby. I can see why I'm supposed to use like the palette knives with this. Cause like even using the paintbrush, I'm getting a lot of texture and like height variation. I guess now that I'm thinking about it, probably something I usually try to avoid when I'm painting. So it's a little different. And it's probably something I need to try and embrace moving forward. I feel like if I mix this darker color with a little bit more magenta, I'll get a nice tone for under the eyes. I don't like how green the mid-tone is. I might need to mix more red with it and go over another layer maybe. I was hoping once I get like a base layer down, then I can start using the palette knives to apply some different ideas. Go a little bit more blobby down here. 
embrace the heavy body acrylic. Okay, now we need something extra dark for the hair. I'm thinking we'll mix all three colors, but use the more blue. Maybe mostly red and blue with a little bit of yellow. Maybe that'll work. It'll look more black. You can always layer it, I suppose. Probably too blue. Yeah, just a little too blue. Full disclosure, I don't consider myself a painter. Although that might be a little obvious. This looks creepy. We'll mix more of a red for the lips. Maybe just mix a little bit of this in. I do enjoy the texture of these, the way it feels under the paintbrush, but maybe not so much for actually using them. So the next step after this is to try and fill in all the white spaces. Trying to figure out how this person actually like made it so that no canvas is showing through. Maybe it's just the greenness that's throwing me off. Let's layer it with our more orangey red version. I also keep looking up at that, which is like way lighter, but I can't seem to get it to be lighter. So I'm assuming there's some white involved in that, not just these three cues we have. Okay, I added a little bit more of the orangey tone on top. It's a little bit more dimensional. I'm seeing a lot less canvas. Paint's also kind of drying on me on the palette. I also need some element over here because it's just looking lopsided. Maybe I'm just over blending. Lips are still kind of non-existent. I need to find a way to lighten the lips. So just adding more yellow to it. I don't know, it looks very similar to that color. But this shouldn't have any blue in it, so it shouldn't look the same as that color. We got a nice orange. Ooh, I think it still needs to be lighter. I do like this color for the nose. I keep seeing Waluigi. It's not the aesthetic I'm looking for. This might be something I just need to let dry for a second. I am getting that cool texture though. I would like to add a little bit more brown to the hair though. I'm gonna need a little white for like the eyes. All right, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and we'll try and kind of do like the same thing, but on one of the other artboards. So I'll grab this one. We'll take the pencil and we'll do the fun part, sketching. We'll do another face. So that seems to be what I'm focused on for today. Again, I'm gonna try and take inspiration from this and try and do similar facial features. Clearly with some influence from my style. <laughs> I'm try the thinner eyebrows. I'm wondering if it would make sense to add like, oh no, it said not to add water. My gut was to add water to this and add like a light wash to the background so you don't get that white poking through. Slim out the eyes a little. This time I'm not gonna let her look at me cause it's intimidating. Now here, I don't know, maybe we want to try something a little different. This eraser seems to work better than the rubber eraser. Alright, here we go. Another attempt. More like the reference. Drawing some lines to help me figure out where shading might go. The more I use this pencil, the more I do like it. But I can't say it's like revolutionary. This time I might try starting dark and then layering light colors on top. I like this sketch. Goodbye, baby. Maybe start with doing like the line art, the darkest points, like the hair and everything. Let's start with this color though. We'll just layer over the darkest sections. This might actually help me not lose these details when we start throwing on the other paint, you know? Because it's definitely with this one, like it just started looking really flat. And hopefully I can fix that by adding details on top later. But I feel like once you lose your sketch, it's kind of hard to find it again. You're chasing the memory of something beautiful. So now I'm doing like shadows and such. Try to think of it as like cell shading here for the first stage. Since I have more experience with that, maybe that'll help me. 
Still seeing a lot of canvas, but I guess that's just gonna need multiple layers. Maybe instead of layering it with a different color afterwards, I'll layer it with the same color. We'll just go for nice flat texture. And mix a new hair tone. Ooh, that's better. Less blue, but still dark. And it's gonna need layers. Darker, and then go back to the lighter. Think of it more cell shading to help me figure out where we're having issues. Like this little shadow is almost the same tone as the actual hair color, which means the actual hair color needs to get a little lighter and add a little bit of a lighter version. Just lighten it here. Eventually we'll start seeing that shadow. layering in some more of this. I've been a little bit of water on my brush because it's looking a little different. Hopefully not too much to cause problems. I think my tones are a little bit more similar. I guess what's really important is just getting down some coverage and making sure they're not like the completely wrong tone or hue I should say. Then we can just do small tweaks instead of having to like do really big tweaks. Color's a little less opaque. It must have some water mixed in. The colors look so similar. They look so different up here, but then like when I put it together, they all look like the same color. I could just use this for the top lip. Maybe a little bit more red in it. I'm gonna let that sit for a second. It's obviously gonna need a couple layers because you can still see the canvas through a lot of the areas. So let me move it back to this. It's mostly dry. Let's see if we can find a way to ruin it. The joy of painting. I think I'm gonna need a little bit of white paint. Hopefully this won't be too much of a crutch. First of all, I wanna use it to kind of color in the eye. Clean up some edges if we wanted. The yeah, highlight, even though I'm sure that's not the end of coloring in the eyes. Even that made a big difference. A little highlight on here. Wow, it's whiter than the board. All right, so let's try darkening the upper lip because I feel like that helped in that last one we were working on. Okay, looks like a mustache. It also kind of looks like an upper lip. I feel like that actually looks different now. The upper lip thing, I think, made a big difference. I kind of want to try the whole like grabbing a color and just slopping it down with this guy. I'll try it with white first. So this is just regular acrylic paint. It's gonna be body blue. I'll mix it in with that. So that's a half and half sort of situation. Kind of cool. Ooh. Kind of a cool texture. Kind of has like a granite concrete sort of vibe. I'm gonna grab some white and just kind of throw it on top. It dries really fast when it's so thin. Let's try, I feel like we could use some yellow. I'll have a bunch of yellow on here. Okay, I changed my mind. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. Now we're just gonna kind of imitate the shading, but with big blobs. Create like texture. I mean, I guess this is kind of the vibe heavy body acrylics are supposed to go for. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I do like the blue and the yellow now. What we're looking for is like texture. I think I do need a small palette knife. I feel like there should be a rhyme or reason to the blotches. Maybe faces was not the right approach for a first attempt with heavy body acrylics. It's very messy. Put some texture to the hair with it. It's kind of interesting. Maybe if I use like a smaller paintbrush. Okay, now that I'm using this white paint that's just regular acrylic, I'm realizing it's much easier to work with and I miss it. Much smoother. See less of the uh, canvas underneath. Try and blend that out. This is why I don't really like painting, specifically when I'm recording, because I just 
I feel like I'm at this like, maybe an abyss. I just can't figure out how to cross over it. I can see the better versions of what I can create like on the other side of it and like the techniques I need to learn, but I just can't get over it. I don't have a long enough bridge. So I keep walking over my bridge and just falling straight into the abyss. And sometimes it can feel a little hopeless. You're like, I don't think it's improving. That's my thoughts on painting. Let me know if you have similar issues or if painting's like your go-to and you have problems with maybe marker art or something. I do like the fun texture of it. Moving forward. I think I need to stop touching it. I'm making it worse. Let's go back to this guy. He definitely needs a little help. Just do another layer of everything. But I'm gonna have to mix the paints again because they're basically gone. We need lots of a yellow. Blue is only at this beginning bit. And lots of red, red, red. Now we mix. More yellow. A little bit more red. Got a bunch of colors mixed. I think I need one that's just red and yellow though. I think that's what I use for like blush areas so that there's no blue in it. I might grab a smaller paintbrush just to try and get details down, but we'll see. I think I want to do it the same way I did it before, starting with the darks. Just making sure we block out all of that canvas that's still showing through. Let's do that then. Don't need to fill in if it's like supposed to be skin, but where it's supposed to be hair, I don't want any spaces, you know? I'm gonna be more globby with it. Got that texture, since I don't think we'll be using this color for anything else. One more down here. I think I colored in the lip with this, but if that's wrong, we can always change it. It's kind of like painting with clay, because like a normal acrylic paint, it would kind of fill in these little cracks in spaces. We'll move on to one of the skin tones we've chosen. The next darkest. Work on the shadows. Filling in all those white spaces that drive me nuts. This new mid-tone I mixed is a little bit darker than what I used previously. Just kinda use it more sparingly. We'll blend into it with the next tone. Okay, switch to the next color. Still be kind of gloppy with it if I feel like it. I kind of don't, so I'm trying to make myself feel like it. So everything's a little darker now. I think it's because the new colors I mixed weren't exactly the same as the previous colors, but we're about to add in the lighter tones now. We'll see if that solves some of our problems. Let's move into the next lightest, but with a little bit more red. Oh, that's what I was gonna do. I'm supposed to mix this color highlight. Basically a yellow and red mixture, but with no blue. It's like a very warm yellow. But we can like push the highlight a bit better. It kind of just looks like I smudged mustard. <laughs> I think it needs more red. It looks great, like in comparison with the other colors. It looks way too white. I think I prefer when I paint to have much less variation in tone on the faces. I think it just makes it look smoother. And this has a lot more of like a chiseled aspect to it. It's like lots of tone variation. It's kind of harder to blend. <laughs> Maybe I can try and just blend all these colors together here. Kind of use that to mix these colors. I'm just looking for a more even tone. But then there's some places where you obviously need a harder edge. So I need to find like a happy medium, figure out where those places are and do it right. I wonder if just using a little bit of water would go anywhere for mixing. Got to look kind of gross. This is what learning looks like. It's a much more even tone. The nose needs a little help, but I'm like nervous <laughs> about making it worse. Oh, I do need to use white too to like color in the eyes because I still see graphite in there. Oop, went over the eye a little. We're gonna go over the lips again, but there's a little highlight. Go over the eyes again. Just make them a little bigger. And then lips. That color mixed with some white. I don't hate it as a lip color, but I think in conjunction with everything else, it doesn't really work. I can like stick it somewhere else. Going with a lighter version of the skin tone. Mm 
mix it in with the white a little. I feel like this skin tone's a lot pinkier than this one, so maybe they used a lot more red. Now, having this done, I would like to try to make this background since I've decided to add white. And then once I do that, I do think I want to add the blotchies. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit because it does have some colors near the edges. And I'm gonna come back to this guy. I'm not seeing the other one. I can't decide which one's better. A little blue there. We'll mix it with white. Let's see what we can get out of here. Grab some of that. And I guess we just sort of blotch it on there. Looking at it closer, I think there's a lot more pre-planning that went into these blobs. So I'm noticing that the ones down here are less saturated and darker than the ones near the center of the face. And I think there's something I could learn from that. Oh, that was too light. It's actually adding something that I like. Interesting. Don't ask me if I know what I'm doing. I don't want to answer that question. I like using the knife to like edge out stuff. I like it. It looks like she's got paint on her face. Kind of like I probably do. I should make it purple. I like the craziness. <laughs> Let's go back to this one. What can I do to do this? Oh, I wanted to try and make that background color. Whatever I did there mixed with white. So we have a little bit of yellow, some blue. I'm gonna mix these up. What we're going for is like black. Yeah? We want this like slate gray kind of thing. Once we add white, see what we're working with. It's just looking blue. Oops. Still very blue. Maybe it needs more red. Sorry, magenta. Oh yeah, that's better. Might add a little bit more white, just because we have dark hair on the edges. I think this will work. I'm gonna pick this up. We'll just try and chop it in there. It's a bit green, but that might just be because there's so much like yellow in that. This is probably my favorite part, just using the palette knife and throwing it on, which probably was like the goal of this whole box. It took me a couple hours, but I'm here. Ah! Hey, my desk. Yeah, it mixed like just enough paint, trying not to smooth it out too much and leave some of that texture. It really makes the orange in the skin pop. That's kind of cool. I mixed a pretty good color. Take this guy, clean up some of the edges, less white. Now when that dries, I want to throw on like what we did with this maybe, just throw on some more flat colors. Now that I've seen them, I kind of like the fact that they're different. This doesn't have a whole lot of something, it's just sort of like, hey I made it. This is like, oh that's different. Could add like little stars. Just add a little something, looks kind of cool. I do like this pencil, I think I'm going to try and use it a little bit more. I'll keep you updated on that. Paint's fun, I think I prefer the less heavy body ones. Although it was really fun to like use that knife and like go for like precision, cut in the edges. That was really, really fun. I want to thank Scrawler Box for sending this box to me to try out and share with you guys if you want. I have a link in the description to get your own box and I think there's a discount down there. Thanks for coming along with me. It means a lot to me that you're willing to share some of your time with me me and watching me um paint <laughs> thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys all next week and i hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles bye